Let's take a look at Groove Agent SE4, which comes bundled with QA 7.5. While cosmetically similar to Groove Agent 1, there are significantly more capabilities under the hood which can really aid in your drum production. We see 16 drum pads available in the main edit screen. We have 8 banks of 16 drum pads for a total of 128 pads per kit. Each pad can contain up to 8 samples. There are a wide variety of kits in different genres, plus the ability to load Groove Agent 1 kits and import Akai MPC 500 or MPC 1000 programs. 16 stereo outputs allow for flexibility in routing to the Cubase mixer for further effect processing if necessary. One of the elements that's so cherished by vintage sampling drum machines was the sound characteristics. Many of them had 12-bit samplers. Groove Agent SE4 has physical modeling of different playback engines, so if you wanted to listen to the sound of a vintage 12-bit sampler, you could select Vintage or Turntable, which was when people would take a 33 RPM record, play it back at 45 RPM to save on sampling space, and then slow it down. So I'm going to select all the drum pads by hitting Control or Command A, or I could select the bottom pad, my bottom left-hand corner pad, and my upper right-hand corner pad while holding down the Shift key. So now we'll listen to our different playback modes. Now Vintage. And Turntable. Back to standard. Now we see on the right hand section our main editing screen within the user interface. And there are different tabs here. We could do a lot of the functions right here within our main edit screen, such as choosing different sample start positions, or if you wanted to sample to fade in or fade out. And you can even zoom here to get more detailed view so that as you make your choices and your edits, you could be more accurate. If I wanted to take an individual pad, any pad that's selected, this processing will affect the selected pads or if you have multiple pads selected. So if I wanted to come here and make my kick drum louder with, within the beat, I can select the kick drum pad and you'll see this yellow outline. I could adjust the volume. I could also adjust pitch as well as filters, but we have more uh, detailed editing capabilities under individual tabs. So if I wanted to adjust the pitch, let's say of my hand clap, we'll go ahead and just solo that. I can now click on my pitch tab and pitch it higher. Another thing that's very handy is if I click on just my bongo here, I can now randomize the pitch. So we have one pitch. So it can make it sound like you have a lot more interesting drums. Or if you wanted to go to your kick drum, you can just take this and we could adjust our envelope. So if I want to come here, I could just drag this in. And come up with some very interesting results there. If I wanted to open up my filters, we'll see that we're going to have a wide variety of filtering choices. So I'm going to select all my drum kits or I could select an individual drum sound. And we could have our classic filter, tube drive, hard clip, bit reduction or rate reduction. So I'm just going to open up classic and we'll go ahead and run the entire track through this. We'll unsolo our kick. So we have a number of different filter shapes available. So if you want to just kind of come here
and all these elements are completely automatable as well. So a really great amount of control with your filtering capabilities. One of the things that's really flexible is how the effects are handled. So if I wanted to come here to my mixer and I play, I could have four insert effects on the kit, on the master, as well as four different aux sends. So if I come here, I can now click and you can have all these different effect plugins. So if I wanted to just open up my studio EQ, it now shows up in the bottom here. And it's a four band parametric EQ. Or if I wanted to bypass that, now let's say if I wanted to set up different effect sends so that I could have just the snare going through uh, a reverb. So I can come right here and then say I want my uh, reverb to go out on aux send four. And I could actually stack up to four different effects if I wanted to reverb going into a coursing into a delay. So I could have up to 16 effects accessible uh, via four different aux sends. So then as I play, if I wanted to take my snare, my hand clap there, I could click on the amplifier section here and just add reverb to just that one independent pad. So very, very easy to do so much of your effect processing internally. Many programs offer levels of undo, but you often don't see this within plugins themselves. So if I've come here, I could actually, if I had made a series of bad edits and I was experimenting with sound, you have 20 levels of undo here in the upper left-hand corner. So you have 20 levels of undo and redo. So you can work without fear of totally messing up your data. Often when we deal with MIDI drum parts, we can see these notes, but we don't necessarily know which is a, a bongo, which is a clap, which is a kick. So we can go into our drum editor, so, but often the drum editor will pull up generic general MIDI names. But now with Groove Agent SE4, I could actually just go to my drum map and say create drum map from the instrument. It's automatically gonna extract these names when I go to my editor, it'll automatically launch my drum editor and I can see exactly what sounds are being triggered where. So very, very handy. Uh, so you don't have to manually enter that in. Now there's a lot of great functionality between Groove Agent SE4 and Cubase via drag and drop. So if I have a number of drum samples, let's say if I want to build up my snare sound and sample that, and we have, let's say eight velocity layers, what I could do is I'm going to start with a blank instance of Groove Agent SE. I can select all the files directly from my project window and drag and drop onto a pad. There's three different areas that you could drag and drop onto the pad. So if you see three icons here, this means that the samples will be mapped chromatically across ascending pads. If I see two icons, that means it's going to replace samples on that pad. Or if you wanted to just place the samples on the pad, you could do it with one square icon. Now, as I do this, we can see our eight different samples broken down into evenly divided into different velocity levels. If you wanted to adjust the velocity levels, you could do that graphically or numerically. The default playback mode will be the velocity, and we could actually trigger velocity, lower velocities lower in the pad, and higher velocities higher in the pad. But there's alternate modes of playing. So if I want to do a round robin, where it just goes from the top to the bottom, or if I want it to be random, or if I went random exclusive, and this will be with no repetitions of samples. This way you could avoid those machine gun-like snare rolls. 
Another method to do it is within a multi-track recording. Let's say in this example, if I have multiple kick drum tracks, what I could do is use my range selection tool and without even cutting the audio, just select a kick drum and we'll zoom in and then just drag those directly onto a pad. Now, if I wanted those sounds to be layered, instead of doing different velocity scales, I could just choose layer and that will play back up to eight samples. And I can alternate my snares and layer sounds together as well, all individually. Drum loops are very common to really aid in production, but many people get stuck using drum loops because they'll have just a fixed tempo. So if I wanted to listen to a drum loop, and we can say we like the feel, the recording, and I could start a production using that and maybe augment it. But if I wanna make that loop my own, there's some really great tricks inside of Groove Agent. So let's open up a blank instance of Groove Agent SE. And now what I wanna do is just drag that loop. Now, as soon as I do this, it's gonna play back the same exact tempo. Now, if my tempo of my project has changed, let's say to 168, that loop would still play back the same tempo. But if I go to my sample tab here in the editor, and turn on audio warp. I'm gonna select music mode and have it synchronized to the tempo. Now when I trigger the sample, it's automatically gonna to sync to the tempo within Cubase. Now if I want to reset the pad, here's another method. If I drag and drop this loop onto the pad, we have a slicing tab. So I'm gonna click on create slices and now it's taken each of the slices and mapped it to its own pad, assigning it to its own MIDI note. So if I wanted to, I could actually do some creative processing here. So if I wanted to take uh, the snare and adjust the tuning of it, or you know, have natural variations on it. But there's also, when I go to my slicing menu, you'll see this little icon right here. And this would allow you to drag and drop directly to our project window. Now, as I've done that, it's basically come right here and created a MIDI file that is the timing of each of these individual elements within the loop. And this MIDI file will trigger the individual samples within Groove Agent SE. So if I wanna make a quick copy, I'll just duplicate this. I could actually have the variations. Let's say I like the feel, but I wanna make the drum loop a little more personalized. I could just use my arrow keys here in Cubase and I'll just randomly change. And now I could have the same timing, the same sounds. And as we listen to this, we can now just come right here. So we see it triggering the slices, the samples, or Groove Agent SE4. Our random variations and back to where we were. So this brings up a whole idea of patterns. Now there's an entire pattern layer. So in addition to having pads that are dedicated to just playing back samples, you have a pattern layer. And if you have all of your pads full, you could actually have a separate MIDI port that's just for the pattern. So if I wanted to, I could take any pattern from my project window, let's say my variation, and I could just drag it, any part from my MIDI project, directly onto the pad. I could also just listen to that variation again. and this will automatically synchronize with the tempo of my project. I could have it switch immediately 
on the next beat, the next measure. I could have it automatically hold or toggle back and forth between different playbacks. Now, to help get started, there's all sorts of patterns here in the program. So if I wanted to come here, I could actually go to my Beat Agent SE and load up different patterns. So I could say I want a pattern here, I want a different pattern here, a variation. And now I could just drag and drop these patterns directly onto my project window. And if I have variations, again, I could say, okay, I want to take this pattern here, move those notes, and I could just drag and drop and have my variation pattern and just trigger the patterns that play back the samples via MIDI notes and have it all perfectly synchronized. What's even more is you can come here and actually load up kits with patterns so that you're ready to go. So as you can see, you can do a tremendous amount of drum production with the included Groove Agent SE4 in Cubase 7.5.